This portion is going to be calculating system pressure. Remember, this is to calculate what to pressurize the closed loop to to give us the most ideal heat exchange and to prohibit a vacuum from forming. A few critical ideas that we need to remember. First things first, if we do not set the pressure correctly in this system, what will happen is at the top of the collectors, we will actually produce a vacuum and that vacuum will then induce bubbles to be presented, either oxygen bubbles that are sucked in, air bubbles sucked into the system, or we'll just get a vacuum lock that's up on the top. So we do not want to do that, but to calculate the system pressure, the very first thing that we want to do is see what the manufacturer specs are. And according to the Stiebel L-Trans Flowstar data sheet for the installation, they're saying that we should raise the system pressure to 50 PSI. That's a very good trend, 40 to 50 PSI. PSI. On your closed loop system, there will be a pressure relief valve, which is typically set to that 70, 75 PSI to prevent overpressure situations. Now, on a closed loop system, where does this rate of expansion of this fluid go? It goes into the expansion tank. So it's not uncommon for this tank to expand and contract. So it is not uncommon to see the pressure gauge on a closed loop system go as low as, say, 15, 10 PSI in cold times and go higher higher to 40, 50 PSI in the summer months when it's really hot. So it's not a static pressure that we're going to see on this calculation here. So what we need to do is calculate the height the top of the collectors are and subtract it from the lowest point on my solar thermal system. I take that distance in feet and I divide it by 2.35 feet. That will give me a value of PSI. I then add that to 15 PSI, which is really 14.7 PSI because that is at sea level. And we say, okay, I'm going to round that up, 15 PSI plus this height difference in PSI, add them together, and that is my low lowest point value. So for example, let's say we've got four collectors and we're going to have those four collectors and we're going to have it at a height of 10 feet, which is an easy number to shoot for. 10 feet is going to give me 10 divided by 2.35, it comes out to about 4 PSI. 4 PSI plus the 15 PSI baseline gives me 19 PSI. That is the minimum value that I need in order to prohibit a vacuum from forming in this system. That's a critical number. The high side to compete with the very high temperatures then would be to start at 30 PSI baseline and then add that same 4 PSI. So that means I would really want to set my system pressure to 34 PSI in this case. Now Stiebel Altern recommends 50 and that's just to, to give us higher the pressure the higher the boiling point for that fluid in the system. So we could go all the way up to say 65 PSI depending upon the system but I don't really want to mess with that uh, in our case if we were doing that because the manufacturer's recommends 50 and our calculation if we were doing with 4 said it was 34 psi so that gives you an idea of how to calculate that all right so that's good now we know we needed to flow through a pipe and we know what the system pressure is and then we calculated how much frictional pressure is in the system that that pump must come through now we got to determine whether that three quarter inch pipe really truly is the best fit for us so the best way i can describe this is we sized the pump for flow and then the height and head. And then we made some calculations based upon some piping that we thought would work, but now we want to make sure that we don't exceed the velocity. If the velocity is too great in the pipes, we will actually start to corrode and wear down that pipe, believe it or not. The friction in there will be pretty great. There are a lot of varieties and a variety of charts that are optimally sized in copper piping for the velocity of flow. Generally, if we're dealing with some real hot water, we like to be in that three to four foot per second. So 2.4, 2.7 feet per second that we have with the four gallons per minute calculation, and I'll show that in Excel, is a great number. If I start to see sevens and eights feet per second, man, that really means that piping is undersized and the velocity of feet per second of that pump trying to produce that flow rate is much too great. So there's a sweet spot. Somewhere in that four foot per second range is a nice ideal value and again determine the size based upon the manufacturer's specs but if we're doing generic calculations these are what we're looking for so now let me go back to this last thing and these are some rough notes again to show you what I've learned over the course of time those flow rates that we calculated before were all based on water so there are issues 
that I may want to increase the glycol slightly higher of a flow rate because in a closed loop system we're going to usually be at a 50 percent glycol to water mix. I want to multiply the velocity of the gallons per minute by 1.33 because the fluid is slightly slicker as it were because of the glycol in it. But some of those values, and this is where it gets real complicated because there's different variables here, is already worked in. Sometimes it's just pure water, sometimes we go with glycol system. Let's look at the Excel sheet and calculate through to see where some of these values come in.